And now, Deep Thoughts. By Chris Dorman and Don Waite. I believe that every particle of dust that dances in the sunbeam does not move an atom more or less than God wishes. That every particle of spray that dashes against the steamboat has its orbit as well as the sun in the heavens. The chaff from the hand of the winnower is steered as the stars in their courses. The creeping of an aphid over the rosebud as much fixed as a march of the devastating pestilence. The fall of leaves from a poplar is as fully ordained as the tumbling of an avalanche. <laughs> Deep thoughts. Father knows best. Next on So What. Before we get started, I just want to let you in on a little inside joke here. There, there's a reason why we named this podcast, or this one, uh, Deep Thoughts, because back in the early days of Sanctuary Denver, uh, back when that was a thing, and we were getting going with that, we had a running joke that we had going back and forth. Uh, Saturday Night Live had a skit called Deep Thoughts with Jack Handy, and we would read those things because they were so yeah, hilarious. Really funny. We would just quote them back to one another, and it was just the funnest thing. Yeah. And so that's what teed us up to have this, because honestly, what you're about to hear are some pretty deep thoughts. Indeed. Hi, I'm Chris Dorman. And I'm Don Waite. Welcome back to So What? So if you're watching our podcast again after last week, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> you didn't that. abandon us. You didn't abandon us. You know, we covered some oh, uh, controversial ground last week, and um, I just, I appreciate you hanging in there with us. Yeah. Um. Several years ago, Pastor Bob asked me to lead a year-long class through the Old Testament. It was called Old Testament Survey. It was going to be year two of intense studies. Well, at, at, up to that point in my life, I hadn't spent much time in the Old Testament. And so I was like, well, if I'm going to be teaching this, I better spend some time reading it and trying to understand it, right? right. So as I began to really dig into the Old Testament for really the first time in my young life as a Christian, I began to see things that just didn't make sense to me and my and and as compared to my then understanding of the working of God in the life of the believer. Mm. Without realizing it, I think I, like most people, was really a closeted deist in that I really I, I thought that, that God had this sort of big picture in mind. But then we're sort of kind of on our own day to day in how we live our lives. And, and we see this all the time and we hear it in conversation. I, I was online with someone on, on Facebook talking about stuff and this person said, oh yeah, God cares about the big things, but he didn't care if I have a ham sandwich or not. And I put a little verse down there, uh, Proverbs 16, 33, by the way, and she stopped talking to me. <laughs> no, no, no. There you go. And Proverbs 16, 33, by the way, is the lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is of the Lord. What could be more random than the throwing of dice, right? But even that is directed by God. So I kept, I came across passages like that and others. It's like, well, okay, there's something I'm missing then. Mm. And then as I began to dig deeper and yeah. read more, I came to see this all pervasive providence of God and my confidence in my God and my certitude of God and the, and the hope that I had just swelled up within me as I saw that God wasn't some distant, aloof, mm. master, planner, creator, and then who abandoned us to take care of ourselves, but he was involved in everything, in the very minutia of life. Everything. That's a deep thought. It is. It's the <laughs> deepest of thoughts. Right, but it's also something that I, I think can get people's ire up a little bit. You're like, God really cares about that. God really cares about, you know, the pedal that just went by, that the wind just brought by. God really cares about um, who's going to win the bowling game on Friday night when we go out bowling with their friends. God really cares about the Super Bowl. God really cares about this and that. Listen, does God care about it the way you are talking about caring about it? That's not what we're talking about. Does it matter to God? Absolutely. Why? Because nothing falls outside of the providence of God. That's right. Nothing, absolutely nothing falls outside of the decree and purpose of God. That's God right. has a purpose, a plan to get to a goal. Remember, we talked about this at the beginning of the series. And everything matters. Everything matters. Everything matters. That's right. Everything that seems random isn't really random. 
You had a great story, by the way, Chris. Before we dig into the scripture, you got a great story. I do. So, you know, this happened, you, you probably, I bet you, you either have a story like this of your own or you know somebody who does. Again, we think things are so random and right. just, and we just don't really think about it at the time. But it's all part of God's providence and his plan for our lives. When my boys were very young, we were on a bike ride. And we were stopped at a crosswalk for a red light. And um, the light turned green. We had the walk sign. And I was getting, taking my boys and we were getting ready to cross the street when one of my boys said something to me. I turned around to answer his question. Right. And as I turned around to step off the curb, a car went flying through what was then to them a red light. If I hadn't turned, if my son hadn't said something and I hadn't turned at that moment, I wouldn't be with you right now. I'd be in glory. I would have been killed. Random. Random. My son, my six-year-old son saying something and I turned around to speak to him. At the time, it just seemed random and unimportant. Like, like, hey, dad, can we go to 7-Eleven when we're done bike riding? Because the 7-Eleven was right there or something. I don't even remember what it was. It doesn't matter. My life was saved. My boys didn't have to witness their father being killed right in front of them. The person who was who who broke the law and ran a red light didn't have the guilty conscience of, of, of killing the father of young children and maybe going to jail and having their life ruined by the off comment of a six-year-old. Random? Not at all. God has a plan and a purpose, and there's nothing outside of that plan and that purpose. Nothing. Although it may seem like it, or we just don't, but again, we just don't think about it. Are you a closet deist? Right. Do you believe that God created everything and then we're sort of on our own to figure things out? If you started that way, if you've been watching this podcast over the last few months, I hope you don't think that way any longer. Because there's no way to be a, to say you believe in what the scriptures teach and be a deist. They are mutually exclusive. Listen, if you believe that anything is random, you're not believing the scriptures. I'm going to say it again. If you don't believe, I'll say it a different way. If you don't believe that God is intimately involved with every single thing that comes to pass, you're not believing what the word of God declares That's right. to be truth. That's right. So we do have to dig in. It's like, if I'm making a bold claim like that, we right. better be able to back it up with some That's scripture right. that says it. That's right. Okay. Right. Like last week when we talked about salvation, we talked about free will. We talked about that all the time and, and our, our desires and the desires of our heart. Why? Because that's what informs our ability to understand how we come to Christ. Right. If fundamentally you believe that ultimately heaven and hell rest on your choice, then you don't believe what the Bible teaches or you don't understand what the Bible teaches. Okay. Because the Bible is crystal clear that ultimately salvation is not be, is, is of the Lord. It is of the Lord. Salvation belongs to our God. Amen. And only to our God. So, for example, so Proverbs 16, 9. In his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. In Proverbs 19, 21. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. Proverbs 20, 24. A man's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand his own way? Think about that. Just pause and think about that. How right. can I understand my own way without that? Yep. Jeremiah 10, 23. Oh, Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. Wow. Daniel 5, 23. We're going to read this from the CSB translation. Don, do you have that? I do. Daniel 5, 23. Instead... You have exalted yourself against the Lord of the heavens. The vessels from his house were brought to you, and as you and your nobles, wives, and concubines drank wine from them, you praised the gods made of silver and gold, bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which do not see, nor hear, or understand. But you have not glorified God, who what? Who holds your life breath in his hand, who controls the whole course of your life. Wow. Wow. The that's whole the course. That's the prophet Daniel speaking to Belshazzar saying, you forgot who your God is. You forgot who you're dealing with. Remember your grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar? Do you remember what happened to him when he, when he got so arrogant and thought actually that he controlled destiny? What God did to humiliate him, to show God who really is God? You forgot all about that, Belshazzar? 
You've forgotten that all of your steps are in the hands of God, that every time your heart beats, wow. it's, be, it's a gift from God. Every breath you take is a gift from God. You have forgotten that. Wow. You know what? You're not going to live much longer to learn that lesson, I'm afraid. He died that night. <laughs> wow. He died that night. Crazy. Friends, we, we have this sense of, really, that that we're alone in this universe. And remember the whole purpose of this podcast is, is, is to increase confidence so that when things, when, when the world throws stuff at us and it's confusing and frightening, we have a foundation of understanding of what the Bible teaches so that we can be confident that our God knows what he is doing, that he is large and in charge. He is in control of all Amen. things and we have no cause to worry. You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast for he trusts in you. If you do not believe that God is in sovereign providential rule of everything, how can you have any hope or confidence? Where is your trust? Is it in man? Is it in government? I mean, what? Oh my gosh. You know, we were talking about this earlier today, Chris. How many decisions were made in the Old Testament scriptures based on the casting of a lot? Yeah. <laughs> That's a roll of the dice, right. as you said before. Right. But but that God's hand was in it. Why did they why did they cast lots? They knew that God's decisions were found in it. That God had he was intimately involved. The Urim and the Thummim. Right. Which is somewhat obscure. Like, what does that even mean? Right. 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 These stones that the, that the, 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 the high priest carried on, on his vestment. Right. These stones were used to divine the will of the Lord. Because God said, use these stones to discern my will when you are not sure. Okay. Well, again, what could be more random? The casting of lots, the Urim and the Thummim. Are you kidding me? The lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is of the Lord. Do you believe in a God like that? Do you believe in that God? Because that is the God that, that you have with which you have to do. The God of the scripture. Yes. Right. So do you need to fear? I mean, seriously. Really? Why could David sleep in the middle of battle, sleep in peace? Why? Because he, he understood that his God was large and in charge and, and he was secure. If God took his life, well, that was God's plan and purpose for him. And all the worrying in the world wasn't going to change that. He understood that his God was big. He understood his God was good. He understood his God was wise. I could trust him. Can you? Do you? Do you? This, this is our foundation. Beloved, this is everything. This is what gives us that calm, that peace in the midst of the storm as you're talking about. Do we have that? If we don't, maybe, just maybe, we're not believing what God has said about himself and about his interactions and his relationship with us yes. in this world around us. Mm -hmm. Boy, I'm all, On my way over here this morning, I drove my wife's car and she had Caleb on. And uh, there was a woman <laughs> talking about a Bible study that they were going to put over the radio. And she said, look, 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 you don't have to be a theologian or anything. Just come with your Bible and let's let's just talk over the radio. And I heard that and I thought, you know what? How uh, it, it made me crazy. It was either in the very first or the very second podcast in the So What series in, in October of 2015, where I said, I quoted R.C. Sproul, where he said, every Christian is a theologian. Mm. You're either a good one or a bad one. Yeah. And beloved, everybody who calls on the name of Christ, you are a theologian. And you're either good or you're bad at it. You're good to the extent that you actually take the word seriously. You take the time to dig deep into the word, to meditate on the word, yeah. to to memorize the word, to talk to others about the word, and to dig deeper, to see what it really means, to see what these words mean. You get the full impact of what God has revealed of himself. For example, let's look at this passage in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. We looked at this passage when we looked at... Um, um, God, Jesus, holding all of the universe together at the molecular level. Okay. Um, actually, I'm going to read Hebrews. I'm going to read Hebrews. Uh, uh, I'm going to read it from the NIV. Okay. And you're going to get it ready on out of the Amplified. Okay. How about that? Because we have again, this is getting to this notion of of deism and 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 how intimately involved God is in His creation. Sorry, it's a little windy here today. I apologize. <laughs> Hebrews one three. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. Now, sustaining, you might have this notion of, of 
preserving, sustaining, like sustaining life, giving someone oxygen and food. You're just doing enough to keep something going, right? To sustain. That's not what the writers of the Hebrews meant. Let me, let me give it to you in the Amplify version. I really love what, what they've done when, when they've really blown these words out. The sun is the radiance and only expression of the glory of our awesome God, reflects God's glory, Shekinah glory, light, light being in brilliant light of the divine, the exact representation and perfect imprint of his Father's essence. What? In upholding and maintaining and propelling <laughs> all things, the entire physical and spiritual universe by his powerful word, carrying the universe along to its predetermined goal. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Oh my God. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Brother. Love it. That, that word sustain. It's the same word when it was talking about bringing, uh, when Jesus uh, turns the water into wine to bring the, the wine to the steward, carrying something to a specific end. Or when Paul is talking to Timothy at the end of his life, bring my cloak, bring my parchments, bring my stuff. I'm going to die soon, but I want to continue to study and grow in my faith. Please bring those things to me. Or or when Jesus said, hey, when, when the, the gospels tell us that uh, they were carrying carrying a paralyzed man on a mat, taking someone from point A to point B, something very specific, directed, purposeful, intentional. That is what Hebrews 1, 3 is telling us. That is who your Lord is. Wow. Do you believe that? Wow. And yeah. if you do, why are you worried about anything at all? Lest somebody think that what we're dealing with is fatalism. Oh, heavens. This is not fatalism. <laughs> <laughs> Beloved, you got to understand, there's a big, big difference yeah. between a fatalistic mindset and believing yes. the scriptures and what God says about yes. his providential rule yes. and reign in the world and in our lives. Remember early on in this series, we talked about the character of God. Yeah. Because... Because fundamental to understanding all this and embracing all this is understanding the character of the God with whom we have to do. We saw that our God is good and that he's wise and that he's here with us and he's present with us in yep. all things. And, and that his ways are inscrutable, that they're beyond our full comprehension. So the God who's behind all of this, we know that he's good and he's wise and he has a plan and a purpose and he's working it out for his glory and our good. We know that. Right. But that's not fatalism. Fatalism, there is no God who's active in it. No. Okay. It is it what it is. It is what it is. Cruel, and, you know, hateful, joyful, great, whatever it is. But there's ultimately no purpose. There's no end goal in mind. It just kind of happens. It's just indifferent. Right. It's just, ugh. So one of our favorite guys, the Spurge, right, Charles Spurgeon, uh, actually spoke on this. And, and I'm going to read you this quote. It's really lovely. He says, you will say this morning, our minister is a fatalist. Your minister is no such thing. <laughs> Some will say, ah, he believes in fate. He does not believe in fate at all. What is fate? Fate is this. Whatever is, must be. But there is a difference between that and providence. Providence says, whatever God ordains must be. But the wisdom of God never ordains anything without a purpose. Everything in the world is working from some one great end. Fate does not say that. Fate simply says that the thing must be. Providence says God moves the wheels along and they are. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. I love it. There's nothing fatalistic about believing what the Bible says about who God is and the extent of his providential rule of his, of his world. Because ultimately, beloved, this is his world world right and he has a goal in mind he had a purpose when he created it all the ultimate glorification of himself the exalt exaltation of his son and our good believe that friends amen <laughs> okay so you might be one okay okay well if that's true chris if god is really really directing my steps really well then, didn't you guys talk a few weeks ago that I'm completely responsible for the decisions that I make and the choices that I make and the sins that I commit? Yes. Yes, we did, because the Bible says so. The Bible says you are absolutely 100% responsible for your choices. Well, hold it. Doesn't that conflict with what you're saying today? No, no. not even a little bit. More about that when we podcast to you next, hopefully in two weeks. <laughs> Another cliffhanger. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, my friends, and God willing, we'll talk to you in two weeks. See you soon. 
So this is this is one of my favorite deep thoughts from back in the day. I'm just going to read it to you exactly as it played out on Saturday Night Live. Deep Thoughts by Jack Handy. If a kid asks where rain comes from, I think a cute thing to tell him is, God is crying. And if he asks why God is crying, another cute thing to tell him is, probably because of something you did. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen to this one. One thing kids like to be. Go ahead. It's an outtake. Who cares? One thing kids like is to be tricked. For instance, I was going to take my nephew to Disneyland, but instead I drove him to an old burned out warehouse. Oh no, I said. Disneyland burned down. He cried and cried. But I think that deep down, he thought it was pretty a pretty good joke. I started to drive over to the real Disneyland, but hey, it was getting kind of late. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh Love if it. you can find them on youtube just do deep thoughts by jack handy and all these little random things will pop up they're hilarious